G'day guys, Nathan here from Exploring Oz, and today we're going to be doing a review and comparison on the single and twin ARB air compressors. So stay tuned to find out more. So guys, we're back in another hot day in the Goldfield WA, and today we're gonna to be testing out and comparing the specs between the ARB single compressor and the ARB twin compressor with air tank. So for the last eight years, I've been using one of these ARB single compressors. And the reason I choose these compressors is they are a good quality, robust unit, and they're renowned for their longevity and reliability out on the tracks. So spending a bit of money on these compressors is something that I consider worthwhile doing. So whether you're a four-wheel driver, tourer, caravan, or just someone who heads bush frequently, having a good quality air compressor on board is a must, and it's something that you need to make sure you carry with you so you can get out of those sticky situations. Having other accessories like life bars and other gadgets in your car of low quality is not so much of an issue. If they break, you can still get home. But if you lower those tire pressures down the beach to say 10 PSI, you're halfway through bumping your tires up and these compressors blow, then you're gonna have an issue getting back home and you're gonna be limping that car or trying to borrow someone else's. So I've been using this model of the CK MA12 compressor now for eight years and I've never had a drummer with the actual unit itself. The only complaint I have about this particular unit is that uh, the section of hose that pumps in close to the compressor does get quite warm just due to the operating temperatures of the compressor itself and this causes a few inches of the hose closest to that compressor to fatigue over time and eventually it does crack and release air and then eventually it will split. Now I have had that happen a couple of times on some trips previously but all I found you have to do is uh, chop up the hose, re-plumb it and you're good to keep going. Now like you can see here, we do have ARB's portable kit here. So this kit here comes with a hard case. You've got the compressor mounted inside there. You've got the wiring required to attach it to your battery terminals with alligator clips. And also you get a hose kit with that as well, which does fit inside the box when you take it out of this box. Now with the uh, twin compressor we're using today, that is hard mounted into the side of the 200 series Land Cruiser here. Now saying that for the last three four wheel drives I've had, I have hard mounted the compressors into my engine bay. So my preference is to have the compressors hard mounted somewhere inside the vehicle. For me, this just keeps them out of the way and stops boxes like this cluttering up your storage space which could be used for something else. In addition to that, in the last three vehicles that I've had, some of them have had air lockers as well which do require the permanent fixture of an air compressor to supply that air locking mechanism. Okay, so let's talk about specs and pricing for these units. So a kit like this CK MA12 single cylinder compressor here with the hose kit, at the start of 2020, you're looking at about $420. So that comes with everything you need there to get started and everything you need to pump up your tires out on the track. Now if we compare that with the twin cylinder compressor in the portable model, which is a slightly larger box than this, it does have the twin cylinder compressor and a four litre tank mounted inside, you're looking at about $945. So you are looking at more than double, but however, you are getting that air tank as well and a much, much uh, more powerful air compressor. With these CKMA12 compressors, you're looking at an airflow rate of about 3.08 CFM. Now CFM stands for cubic feet per minute, and that's sort of your generic uh, measurement to measure airflow there. Now that's measured at zero PSI. So with the CKMTA twin compressor, you're looking at an airflow rate there of about 6.16. So obviously double there, and that would be due to those two cylinders. So with the CKMA12 compressors, you're looking at a duty cycle of about 50%, whereas you compare that to the big brother of the twin compressor and you've got a 100% duty cycle, which means it will run forever without stopping providing that continuous airflow. Now both of these compressors do have thermal cutout switches, so for whatever reason, one of these motors were to get too hot, they will just automatically cut out and don't require the owner to do that for it. However, with the twin compressor there, each of the motors have their own separate thermo cutout switches, which means that if one of those cylinders gets too hot, the other one will continue to run and the other one will just shut off until it cools down. Saying that, I've never had either of these compressors ever have an issue with heat and they've never stopped on me before. So in Australia, most of our vehicles here that we have are 12 volt. However, if you do have a 24 volt vehicle or a big truck, you can get both of these compressors in that 24 volt configuration. Now some of the things you're gonna to need to run with your air compressor, are some of these accessories I've got here. So first of all, you're gonna need an air hose. So ARB do have their own air compressor pump up kit. This comes with six meters of flexible hose. And it also comes with quite a few adaptions there as well to uh, connect to your tires, along with a few other accessories to connect to things like air mattresses or footballs, soccer balls, whatever you wanna pump up there. 
In addition to that, I've also purchased this gauge here. So this is a uh, quick inflator gauge. This pops onto your tires, end of the air hose here, and uh, you've got a manual gauge there. So as you're pumping up, you can just release that trigger, and it'll tell you your PSI without having to take off the air hose and put on a separate uh, gauge there. I also do carry a digital gauge. Sometimes I can find these ARB ones are just off a little bit, so once I've got them calibrated with a digital gauge, I'll then uh, alter the settings that I have them at, and I'll just use this to double check all my pressures in my tires. Further, you can also use these digital gauges to check the PSI in your rear suspension airbags if your car has that as well. So the last thing I've got here is just an ARB Easy Deflator. So this just screws onto your uh, valves and allows you to remove the core of the valve and means that you can get a lot of that air out very quickly, allowing you to get out on the track sooner. So now let's go into how I've got my twin compressor set up, what I've got wired up here on this panel here, and then we're gonna go into testing how quickly they can pump up some of these tires. Okay, so moving into the rear of my Toyota Land Cruiser here, you can see that in this side panel here, we have an ARB twin compressor mounted in behind those plastics. And just in front of that, just up behind the upper plastics up the front here, we have a four litre air tank. Now this is all mounted in a factory area where there's normally a storage pocket. That storage pocket could be easily removed and just replaced it with a bracket that you can buy from ARB, which directly mounts onto this air compressor. So another advantage of having the air compressor mounted remotely like this is having those steel braided lines as well. So the compressed air is obviously stored inside that tank at 150 PSI, and that then comes out through to the front of the drawers here, where I have the ARB outlet mounted for the air hose. Now that then eliminates the, uh, the issue that I was having with the air hose getting really hot and then splitting and breaking, which means that hoses in this instance are gonna last a little bit longer. Okay, so here on the driver's side of the drawer of the wing kit here, we have all my air controls for the vehicle. So up at top here, we have a dual PSI gauge, and this refers to the pressure in the airbags in the rear suspension of the car. Just underneath that, we have two paddle switches. This will uh, change and uh, increase and lower the pressures in those airbags. And then underneath that, we have two switches. One of them, which controls the air compressor activation, and the other one is just a blank for now. And beneath that, we just have the ARV outlet hose. So one of the advantages of having it mounted on the rear of the cruiser like this is that it means that I can also pump up the caravan tires from the back of the car using the one six meter standard hose kit you get with the ARB kit. Previously, I've had the uh, air compressors mounted up in the engine bay, and it means that those hoses aren't gonna reach without adding a second kit, and it just means you've gotta carry two hoses around with you at all times. In addition as well, I have this wired up in a way where the compressor will not turn on when the car's on. You always want to make sure your car is turned on when you have these compressors on, especially the twin compressor, they do draw a few amps, and you run the risk there of draining the battery flat if you were to uh, have that compressor running with the car off. However, I do have it wired up for the air compressor to turn on if I want to increase the pressures in these airbags. To do this, it only takes about 20 seconds or so to get these pressures from about from these low figures here all the way up to say 55 psi, and that uh, 20 seconds or so of activation is not going to affect your battery that much. Okay, so let's start the car up and get this air compressor turned on. So now that we have the car on, we're gonna simply hit that switch. So when you turn the compressor on, the compressor's gonna turn on and it's gonna prime that air tank there. So now we have 150 PSI all primed up in all the lines and in that four liter air tank. Another great advantage of having a hard mounted external plug-in point as well, is you can plug these uh, inflators in directly to this without having to get your hose out. So if you want to just to plug in, pump up a mattress or a sports ball, for example, you can do that. And you're still going to be able to use your air compressor straight from the outlet. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to get this rear tire here on the Land Cruiser down to 10 psi. We're then going to inflate the tire from 10 psi up to 40 psi, which is what I run on this Land Cruiser. And we're going to do that with both using the single compressor, and then we're going to redo the test again with the twin compressor and see just how much faster it is. The twin compressor in this vehicle is wired directly to the auxiliary battery on the car. So I'm gonna make sure when we use the single compressor, I'm gonna have that hooked up to the auxiliary battery as well to make sure we have the same voltages coming in throughout both tests. There we go, dead on 10 PSI. Okay, so I should also mention the tires we're going to be pumping up today are a 305-65-18. So in metrics terms, that's a little bit closer to a 34 than it is to a 33. So we've got some fairly decent sized tires we're pumping up today. 
Now also when doing a test, we're gonna be using the same equipment to pump up the tires, which is just gonna be this uh, ARB inflator, which is the analog gauge. And I'm also going to allow the uh, both the compressors to prime, which means they'll be fully loaded with 150 PSI in the tubes prior to starting the test. So let's get that done. Okay, so the vehicle's on. Single compressor, 10 PSI to 40 PSI. Let's do it. There we have it, three minutes and six seconds. We're dead on 40 PSI causing, according to the ARB gauge. So let's take this tire back down and do it again with the twin compressor. Okay, tires are 10 PSI again, lines are primed, twin compressor, 10 PSI to 40 PSI. So time to beat, three minutes and six seconds. There we go, one minute and 34, exactly half of that of a single compressor. Okay, so another great advantage of the twin compressor over the single compressor is the ability to use air hose connections like this and or air tools as well, which the single compressor just can't quite keep up with. So at the moment, we're connected to that single compressor. As you can hear, there's a burst of air that comes out, then it dies right down and the air compressor there primes in the background. So it just doesn't have enough duty cycle there to provide a continuous high flow amount of high pressured air. Let's plug it into the uh, twin compressor and we'll show you the difference. So plug it into that twin compressor, you'll be able to hear the difference here in the amount of air that comes out initial, and it does slow down, but however it continues at a decent pace throughout the uh, cycle. Okay, you can see there how much difference that made just by having that twin compressor pulling through that air. It continued that high pressure for a lot longer. It did slow down, however, it continued to provide a significant more volume of air coming through than a single compressor could possibly produce. Okay, so another topic to talk about is the air tank itself. Do you really need one for your setup? And uh, you can see here I've got a four litre air tank to my twin cylinder compressor, however, the single cylinder compressor doesn't have one. So they are great in the fact that when you go to pump up your tires, that first bit for the first 10 seconds or so, you are gonna get a higher airflow through there. That's just that stored 150 PSI in that tank coming through. However, once that tank runs out, the airflow is only gonna flow as fast as the compressor that you have. So if you only have that single cylinder compressor, it's gonna return back down to that single cylinder airflow rate. And the other advantage to having a tank is between tires. So if you're pumping up one tire, you finish that tire and you move to the second tire, while you're moving between the tires, that compressor is still pumping up and that uh, air tank is just filling back up again. So when you go to start that second tire, again, it's just gonna be quicker at the start until it slows back down to that second uh, twin cylinder compressor rate. So look guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. The idea of today's video was just to try and uh, identify some of the differences between these two compressors and try and uh, give, some, give you some ideas to think about when considering what kind of compressor you need for your car. I would recommend buying a high quality compressor, whichever brand that is. It is an essential tool for when you're heading out bush and something you need to get back in again. If you're just driving remote areas, you've got say 31 inch tires and you don't often go away, the ARB single compressor is definitely gonna be adequate enough. It still provides a great CFM and uh, look, it's a reliable unit that isn't gonna let you down. If you're one of those guys that are running like 37 inch tires and you're going out every weekend and you're pumping up four tires, maybe even a friend's car as well, then maybe you're gonna wanna look at something like the twin cylinder compressor, just for that speed and the power that it has behind it. Anywhere between say 35s and 33 inch tires, look, it's gonna be up to personal preference. Now there's no disadvantage to having a twin compressor with a tank, however, it's just that cost. It is more than double when you include that air tank in there as well. So something you're gonna have to weigh up and figure out how much it is worth to you. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions or anything you want me to explain further, make sure you hit us up on Facebook or Instagram at ExploringOz and we'll make sure to get back to you. Otherwise, thanks for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.